couple. We do or it something. too. We're always like, oh my god, that baby has no socks on. Yeah. Oh my god, that baby has no jacket. Like yeah. you know, we do it too. Where at the same time, I will pick up a Cheeto from the floor and give it to my child. Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time at a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. By now, most of us have heard about helicopter parents. Today, we will discuss the possible reasons behind this parenting style and how it became so prevalent. We will share some of our own experiences, the effects of helicopter parenting, and some research into why modern parents seem so much more overprotective of their children versus how they were raised. Welcome to part two of our summer parenting series. Today is all about helicopter parents. The term helicopter parent was first used in, I'm totally going to butcher this name, Dr. Heim Gennott's 1969 book, Parents and Teenagers. Teens used this term who said their parents would hover over them like a helicopter. It became popular enough to become a dictionary entry in 2011. It's a fine line between being an engaged or involved parent versus being a helicopter parent. So hopefully we don't blend those definitions. Did we have helicopter parents growing up? In short, no. We had more in common with Gen X and the latchkey kids. We had chores and it wasn't for money or allowance. We had a bedtime, but it was our job to get ourselves to bed maybe with a gentle reminder or two. We also would get ourselves off to school and many other things as kids. We didn't have a phone with us and our parents weren't overly involved in our friendships or our schooling. We didn't even have that many activities that we participated in. Our daughter Cadence has several right now. She takes piano, swimming, she's involved in Girl Scouts, getting ready to start cheerleading, and we still homeschool, even during the summer. We also find activities or outings to get her out of the house, such as fishing, riding bikes, and even some other one-off classes that she takes online. With that whole list, do we helicopter parent our kids? Yes and no. We are pretty hands-on for the most part, and we have to be very involved with Cadence. <laughs> she is forgetful. And she spaces things all the time. She has no focus right now at her age. We could ease up a bit and get better about discipline and reward. She tends to get what she wants and we probably offer way too many warnings and reminders. What are some of the effects of helicopter parenting? Well, for starters, there's decreased confidence and self-esteem. Simply put, the over-involvement sends the message that the child isn't trusted to do it alone. Also, underdeveloped coping skills. The parents that clean up a mess every time a kid makes this one or they fix everything for them, they're robbing the kid of the feeling of failure or disappointment so they never learn how to deal with those feelings as they get older. Increased anxiety. Kids are having higher and higher levels of anxiety and depression in modern times. It's starting at a younger age, and it's getting worse and worse. A sense of entitlement. Kids get accustomed to parents and others always doing things for them, and are always used to getting their way. They are never wrong, and they never have to put in any effort of their own, because parents won't let them fail. Underdeveloped life skills. This may seem obvious, but kids don't learn how to fail and overcome things on their own. People like to develop their own ways of doing things. And when you're forced to doing things the right way, or only doing it one way, can become very discouraging. So why did helicopter parenting even become a thing? 
okay, or a term that we use. Possible reasons. First up, families have fewer kids these days on average. This has led to kids gaining more attention from their parents. As families left farms, kids were no longer a part of the household to help with the labor. So kids became something to dote over and cherish. But when you only have one kid, it would also make the child seem more valuable since a parent can't afford something to happen to them. This makes parents hold on to their child a little bit tighter. And if two parents have four kids, even if they wanted to be overprotective, they just simply couldn't be that way all the time because they're outnumbered. It's absolutely exhausting to just do it with one kid. KJ's a great example of that. Yes. <laughs> and I also would add to this that life's become a lot easier and very cushioned over the last 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Um, you know, a century ago, life was a, lot, a little bit harder and it was not necessarily your responsibility to always worry about your kids' feelings. Um, you were worried about survival. You weren't worried about making sure that it was socially acceptable that they were in all of the big activities and social events. Mm -hmm. They had like a buddy system. Yeah. Back then, there were so many kids. <laughs> yeah. Also, dual income households have obviously become a thing. We've talked about this in, in past episodes, but more parents are working full time than ever before. But parents are also spending more time with their kids than ever before. Many parents today grew up in the 70s and 80s when divorce rate was at its peak. This likely led to parents desperately wanting to have a whole or complete family. Since both parents work so much, they feel guilty about not spending enough time with their kids, and so they're overcompensating. There's also been some large pushes in recent decades to interact more with your kids and to be heavily involved for their future success. Yes, I think this has led to some of the anxiety around every stage of their childhood. And schools, colleges are more competitive, jobs are more competitive. So they're constantly trying to give them a leg up, even as a baby playing Mozart in the crib or in, even in the womb or being overly involved. They have to do this when they're this age and they have to do these things and so forth so that they can develop. That's why you see kids who are four years old who are becoming masters at a musical instrument or a sport or some other skill. It's, it's a little over the top sometimes. And I would say as an example, when we were obviously both working full time outside the home, it was literally work, <clears throat> kids, bed, work, kids, bed. Like we had no extracurriculars. We, you know, we didn't really hang out with friends. No. On, you know, it was when we weren't at work or sleeping, it was all about our daughter. Um, and then Brayden came along and that obviously changed things. So I think the dual income household is obviously the majority and has definitely changed the dynamic that parents feel like they need to be with their, their children when mm -hmm. they're not at work and they're not sleeping. And I think it could be a contributor to a lot of unhappiness and depression and many other things out there. Number three, kids have busier schedules than ever before. We've already alluded to this, but extracurricular activities have been on the rise from music class to sports and much, much more. We didn't used to do that stuff until, like, high school. No. Oh, no. Like, maybe you did, like, rec league during the summer, but that was it. <laughs> of course, we were in a small town, so yeah. <laughs> maybe it was different in a larger city. Yeah, but it was not something you did at five years old to start getting involved in a bunch of classes and activities. It does seem like kids are starting at a younger age. They have multiple activities during school year and during the summer. It used to be you did summer activities to stay busy, like camp or something. But now kids are doing things after school and on the weekends very, very often. It's not just over the summer. All of this kind of also leads to kids having even less time directly with their parents at home. They're out of the home more than ever because with all of this, you're eating out. You don't have time to stay at home and, and make a, a nice meal, even for just dinner, because you get off work, you go get the kids, take them to their activities, boom, 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 come home, bed. You, you just pick something up on the way or eat fast. And so kids are 
constantly in a classroom or in some sort of activity under the supervision of adults, and many times it's not the parents. Number four, kids have fewer neighborhood playmates. We can attest to that. For sure. There's no kids on our block. There's no. <laughs> nope. And so less kids in the average household leads to less kids in neighborhoods, would seem logical. But we've even seen scouts and other mm-hmm. groups have trouble staying whole sometimes because of folks moving around and they get involved in their activities and they bounce back and forth. And in a small town, kids could just go to the neighbors. Mm-hmm. It seemed like everybody had neighbors that they were real close to. And it, it's definitely harder to do in a larger city, but it, it seems like there's something missing there. We've heard friends that wanted to move because they didn't have that neighborhood feeling mm-hmm. with other kids of, around. Of or involved watching, neighbors. Yeah, and involved neighbors, people watching out for your kids for you, you mm-hmm. know, and stuff. And just parents, you know, kind of, you know, back and forth and everything and having an eye on stuff. There's that's That's not a thing, at least where we live now. So without all of that, Kids are now relying on their parents for entertainment and Mm -hmm. to be engaged with them and answering their questions and talking to them. And it's not enough just to provide for them anymore and protect them. So you're there to also provide all that entertainment they don't have with other friends or neighbors. The fifth reason that we think that helicopter parenting has become a thing is technology. So it's no doubt that more kids than ever before are having virtual experiences with uh, grandparents, friends, classmates. It's not all bad, but it's another thing that parents must oversee. Mm -hmm. It also just leads to our expectations to constantly be connected. Mm -hmm. So, and I... Absolutely. Cadence has her own computer. She has her own email address. You know, we look at it, but even before, you know, just a few days ago, we had to pull up her browsing history because she was supposed to be doing school and come to find out she was looking at funny videos on YouTube. And so it's like, I feel like I have to hover over you because you're not doing what you're supposed to. I have to, I have to check in on the mistakes that you make basically versus just letting her figure it out on her own some kids got into the stuff that they probably shouldn't have when when i was growing up um because of just the lack of parental oversight Mm -hmm. and supervision but i think it can go a little too far where we want them in a little bubble all the time and never to feel bad never feel any pain but also never see anything or hear anything that we don't deem appropriate Mm -hmm. when they do get out in the world they'll be vulnerable if we Mm -hmm. do that too much Mm -hmm. they'll be naive but but it's such a yeah and it's such a fine line i i don't know where the where does it start and where does it end where you're overprotective versus just being engaged and having some supervision on things like youtube at her age i don't know that i want her just Mm -hmm. perusing around finding all kinds of inappropriate videos now it's it's better than certain other things she could get into on online but Mm -hmm. just saying that there's a fine line i mean at the same time she's nine year old she's nine years old she does not have a cell phone and some of her friends have cell phones and i think that that's absolutely ridiculous i'm sorry she has a home phone she never uses it she never calls anybody Mm -hmm. anymore it's she doesn't have a tv in her room she does not we've never had an issue with her getting on her computer you know, yeah. in the middle of the night or anything with it being in her room. Now, if that ever happened, it's out of there immediately. I don't think that technology is a big problem for us, but I do think in general, if we're the minority when it comes to technology for our children, I think the majority of parents out there, their children are into a lot more technology than ours. And that could be where they probably need to hover a little bit more. If you were to line these reasons up which one's more important technology would definitely be there so also lastly uh, we think that a big reason that helicopter parenting is happening um is because of fear and i 
Absolutely. I have a ton of fear and anxiety about growing up um, in the suburb that we live in. It's not the small town that I grew up in that was a mile by half a mile with no stoplights. Um, <laughs> so it's a fear of crime, which has been steadily going down in the last several decades. But you don't want to wind up on the news. Exactly. You don't. Yeah. And I. How many times do I say that? This uh, uh-huh. this kid's gonna make me wind up on the news. Um, you don't want to be that one in ten thousand or yeah, whatever. Like, oh my god, that person's so stupid. Why would they? You know, fear of litigation and child protective services. Like we don't spank cadence. We don't. Pull, but you you have this fear that these types of services and agencies have a way of like getting things out of children and not in a manipulative way, but that's their job you know, to get those things out of children. So it's like, okay, what, what's my kid going to say? Like, yeah, my mom and dad ground me and yeah, my mom, you know, and like, how far is it going to be taken? Fear of judgment from other parents, neighbors, or even complete strangers at the store. People just need to mind their own damn business. Yeah, Sometimes. and nobody nobody does that anymore. We've had twenty years of reality TV, mm-hmm. and you know, social media is a little younger than that. But after this long work, you you notice, you feel the stare from another mm-hmm. couple. We do or it something. too. We're always like, oh my god, that baby has no socks on. Yeah. Oh my god, that baby has no jacket. Like yeah. you know, we do it too. Where at the same time, I will pick up a Cheeto from the floor and give it to my child. So it it goes both ways. He, we've he likes never it better off the floor. Yeah, <laughs> we've never claimed to be perfect. <laughs> so adults and parents have obviously become more neurotic and anxiety ridden than ever before. So the illusion of control that parents feel regarding their kids helps ease this fear. Yeah. Yeah, and it can lead to the kid rebelling even more. So the, it's it's that saying, the the um, tighter you hold on, the looser your grip actually becomes mm-hmm. when they get older. Yeah, And but if you do it too much now, then your yeah. kid is not able to explore and grow no. on their own because they always want to be right up next to mommy. And they're gun shy. They don't want to take any risk or take a chance. They don't want to be wrong. KJ would do this with schooling. Mm-hmm. She she felt smart and special, and we we told her things like that. And then come to find out, she wanted to play it safe because she knew the answers and she knew she was going to be right. She was afraid of being wrong and trying to stretch herself mm-hmm. to questions on a test that she didn't know or another activity that she wasn't comfortable with yet. Because she hasn't mastered it already, I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's one thing it can definitely lead to. So what do we do about it? Well, there's a few things we can do. Uh, just a couple of quick examples. So we can let our kids struggle in a controlled environment. We're not the generation of sink or swim. We're not going to yeah. toss our kids in the deep end. Don't and leave the front door open and unlocked and no, no, no. see who survives. Like <laughs> no, no, no. no. We're not playing Russian roulette here. Like, basically, (laughs) we're saying let them have to figure out a controlled activity in the home on their own. If something simple is maybe broken, you know, get them to figure out, okay, how are we going to fix this? What are we going to do about this? Maybe go look it up or maybe try some things out and see if it works. And they definitely need to feel the weight of their failure and have to fix things on their own. So... When it comes to spilling a big glass of milk or something, Mm -hmm. you have to clean this up now. Or if you broke something that has to be paid for now, maybe that needs to come out of their allowance. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying if it's a $100 decoration or something, they should pay for that. I'm saying they should, yeah, (laughs) just go back to that memory. Um, But you should make them have to shoulder some of the responsibility so they feel that weight. So when they get older, they understand what happens if they don't take care of things. Also, look for ways to encourage them to do certain tasks like this and build their confidence and show them that you trust them to do it. You believe in them. And then they'll be so much prouder of themselves after they do it. Um, It could be simple things like when KJ was learning how to ride a bike. She had to fall Mm -hmm. and get back on it. I'm not going to stay in here and hold you the whole time. Actually, I couldn't, too, because we were going down a hill. (laughs) We would encourage people to take stock of their parenting styles and give yourselves a break. Don't beat yourselves up 
if you're a helicopter parent. It's certainly not all bad, but we may be doing more harm than good. Being very engaged as a parent is definitely better than being distant. Hopefully this discussion provided some insight and made some people out there stop for a second and think about their busy day-to-day -day life. Remember that our jobs as parents is to render ourselves obsolete. We are raising the future parents of tomorrow, so we need to help them become the best that they can be. This week's call to order is simple. Are you a helicopter parent? Are you too involved and are you spending all of your time ruling over your kids? It's okay to loosen up a bit and take a minute to just create safe environments for your kids to learn to do things for themselves. Make them pack their own bag, have them join a sport and be forced to work with other people on a team and so on. Get creative and come up with more examples that will help you find a better balance. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.